To install WordPress using cPanel, log into your cPanel and then go down and find your file manager. And I like to use the regular file manager instead of legacy. You're going to install the WordPress zip file in your public HTML directory. So go into public HTML, just click on the link, and you'll see any files and directories that you currently have on the right hand side. So once you're in public HTML, then upload the zip file that you downloaded from WordPress.org. So I'm going here, I'm going to click Browse, and I'm going to find the WordPress zip file and let it upload. Once it uploads, you'll see that it's complete. Then you can close the window, and you should see your zip file uploaded in public HTML. Then click on the box to select the zip file and click Extract at the top and click Let It Extract in your public HTML directory. Once it's extracted, you'll see the results. You can close that window and you'll see a directory called WordPress where the zip is extracted. Once you've done that, then you can select the zip file and delete it. You no longer need it. Now, if you click on your WordPress directory, you'll see that WordPress has extracted into its own directory called WordPress in public HTML. Now I like to leave WordPress in its own subdirectory on my site, but if you wanted, you could go into your WordPress subdirectory and copy all of these files out to your public HTML root. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it in the subdirectory. Now you may not want your subdirectory called WordPress. You could, for example, click on the word WordPress and rename it anything you want. I'll just rename this to blog. It doesn't really matter what it's called. So now I have WordPress in a subdirectory called blog on my website. So if my website, for example, was uh, testing.com, then the web address to my WordPress install would be testing.com slash blog. Now the only other thing that you need to do to prepare your site to set up uh, WordPress is to create your database and your user. So let's do that. I'm going to close File Manager. I'm going down to my actual uh, MySQL databases and click on that. And then if you have other databases, you'll see them. There are no databases here. And you're going to create a database. So call it anything you want. I'm just going to call mine Blog, the same name as my WordPress install. The database has been created, and I'll see the database in my link, uh, my uh, list of databases. Now keep in mind, the on most cPanel accounts, the name of your account will be appended to the name of the database that you created. So you're going to need to know this information, just jot it down or something. The name of the database is Extreme I1, which would be your account name, whatever your account name happens to be, underscore, and what you name the database. Now you're going to need to assign a user to that database. So go down and look, and you may have, depending on what kinds of things you've installed before, you may have lots of users already uh, on your account. You can use any existing user or you can create a new user. I'm just going to create a new user. So to add a new user, I'm going to call it blog1 and for a password, I usually just generate a password. I'll let the control panel do that for me and that way it's a good strong password and that's the password that it's generated. So I'm going to copy that password just so that I know what it is. Okay. So again, you could type in a password or let the system generate it for you. And then I'm going to create that user. So my database username is blog1 and that password. So create the user. And then it tells you again the user was blog1 with the password of that. So I'm going to go back now. And then the last thing I need to do is to go here, add user to database. So my user blog one I want to add to the database blog. I only have that one database. If I click this, see all those users there. So make sure you add the proper user to the proper database if you have more than one. Click Add. Give all privileges to that user on the database and click Make Change. 
Okay. So now I have everything set up to be able to install WordPress. I can go back now to my databases and I should see that there's my database. That's the name of the database. That's the name of the database user and I know the password. So now I can go to the site where my through the browser URL to my actual install and again that would be HTTP and then whatever your web address is and slash and then whatever you called your WordPress directory. In my case I called it blog and it'll tell you here there doesn't seem to be a config file. Do you want the uh, system to try to create it for you? And I'm going to say yes, go ahead and create it. And it tells me the things I need. So I know the database name, the username, and the password. And then the database host is most likely going to be uh, already filled in for you, local host. So database name here, we know that my database name was That was the database name, remember. The username is also, I just called it blog1. And then the password, I'm pasting in that password that was generated for me. Localhost is going to be the uh, host name 99% of the time. You're not going to need to change that. And then the table prefix, you can just leave it at WP. Uh, or you could change it because you can if you would like to so install multiple blogs on one database. But since I only have one blog for this database, I'm just going to leave it at WP and click Submit. And then run the install. So here you can go through. If you've entered all the information correctly, then you're going to get the screen to go ahead and set up your database. So here I'm going to go email address and then whether you want it to appear in the search engine Click install and then install. If it works, it'll give you your password. Your username is always going to be admin. And then you can log into your blog. I'll paste that password in and log in. And there it is, all installed. Should work properly. Uh, pretty easy. So the steps are pretty simple. Just upload your source code, extract it, rename the directory if you want to rename it, create your database, create your database user, add the user to the database, give it all privileges, and then go through the uh, uh, browser-based install process and it should all work for you. It's pretty simple uh, to install. And now once you install 2.7 for the first time, then uh, you have actually uh, ability within 2.7 to upgrade without having to go through cPanel again. So I don't need to upgrade because I'm running 2.7, but when a new version comes out, then I should be able to come here and upgrade through WordPress itself. So hopefully this has helped you uh, figure out how to manually install WordPress through cPanel.